I think one of the questions that's interesting for Christianity today is how are we going to talk about God in a in a context in which there are so many different faiths that are all present at the same time in early Christianity as people were developing their theology and thinking about it there were these three views there was the eternal torment view and there was the annihilation view uh, and there was the universal restoration view in early Christianity in the first few centuries there unfortunately what happened was we got into once we get into Western civilization and the Western Christian tradition that was really defined by the Augustinian idea that there is going to be eternal torment, eternal conscious torment. And that became sort of cemented into the Western Christian tradition. It's just recently now that people have even begun to be comfortable talking about the annihilation position and the universal restoration position again. But what, what, what's happened is the eternal torment doctrine has been so baked into the Christian cake, so to speak, in Western civilization, that just in the common perception of what's Christianity, just in, in the common world, people think, it, oh, well, Christianity is the idea that God has his heaven and he has his hell, and he's gonna put his Christian people in his heaven, he's gonna put everybody else in his hell where they're gonna burn up forever. And, that's the sort of the stereotype. I mean, that's kind of the picture that there, that there is kind of in everybody's mind. And so I think in a way the annihilation point of view doesn't make that picture much better. It, it makes it, it's better than burning people forever. But then the annihilation point of view still seems to say that, that if we're imagining this God who created this, made this creation, and uh, somehow did, knew that not everybody would come to a good end, but went ahead with it any, anyway. And I think that, that that forms a problem, a huge problem, for the goodness of God. And I've become convinced, I think David Bentley Hart argues this well, that the only way that we can hold together a philosophically coherent Christianity in which God can be truly said to be good in the face of the problem of natural, the natural evils of the world and the problem of hell or correction is the universal restoration point of view. To me, it's the, to me, it's the only form of Christianity that can withstand the test that the, of, the modern, of the modern era. Uh, so, am I looking then to excommunicate all other forms of Christianity, uh, no. But I am saying that I think we're at, a, we're at a time that in order to have a Christianity that's really going to make sense going forward, that the universal restoration point of view is, the, is to, in my mind, the only one where we can make a, a credible philosophical, theological argument that the God that we're talking about is actually good. And that's, that's, why, I think it's, that's why I think it's necessary. That's, that's why I'm, I'm hoping that more and more people will come to see the necessity of this and that, that just like uh, it became, that the eternal torment view became the dominant view in Western Christianity, I hope in the next thousand years that uh, universal restoration becomes the dominant view that's associated with Christianity and that we look at this, we look back at this time as sort of coming out of kind of a dark age and sort of coming into a light, some better understanding of how to put together our faith. Interestingly, it's not like we have to invent anything new, we just have to remember some ways that people like uh, Gregory of Nyssa and some of the early church fathers have al had already done the work. The work has is, is already been done, really. We just have to remember something that we that we've forgotten.